Gustavo! They left their prints on the guns, the victims, and the times. The prints of the men who terrorized New York in the 20s, that strange and nightmarish time when efficiently organized guerrilla mobs offered their services to ready buyers. Services ranging from a schlammen, not so simple assault, to a hit, simple murder. My name is Barney Roditsky. 20 years gangster squad, police department, city of New York. Here's a typical price list freely circulated by the Maxi Gorman mob. Beat up, $25. Broken arm, $50. Broken leg, $75. Combination, arm and leg, $100. Fractured skull, $150. Prices for other special services on request. Maxie Gorman, slugger, terrorist, murderer. His record, short terms on Welfare Island for simple assault. It wasn't easy to persuade an eyewitness to testify in court against Maxie, but I finally hung an extortion rap on him, sent him away for five years. It was the longest time he ever served. I guess it gave him time to think. And when he returned home to his wife, Stella, he was a different man. Not a better man, different. More dangerous. Yeah, that was the best thing ever happened to us, Stella. That five-year bit Roditsky hung on me. Oh, Maxie, how can you say that? You know how I waited, yeah, how I missed you. Give me time you. to think. To do some real thinking. Real thinking? Yeah, and it made me see what's it all about. That's right. It made me understand what a dope Eat, I... Maxie. You talk later. Eat, eat. That's what's been wrong with our whole life. You got enough to eat a crummy place to live and you're satisfied. We always been happy, Maxie. Yeah, but I ain't happy no more. Maxie ain't happy no more. <laughs> look at his joint. And look at the way you look, how you dress. Oh, <laughs> we've been stupid. Sluggers, muscle men, get a few bucks, spend it, and gotta wind up in the can. Stupid. Gotta wind up with heavy time and broke. Oh, Maxie, we, we still got. Yeah, we still got. It's, it's the brain men who take it all. Yeah, the brain man. And I got a whole new vision. Yeah, Maxie's got a whole new a vision. A whole new future laid out for us. A future where I hire the sluggers, where I hire the muscle men, and where I wind up with a loot and the respect. Oh, sounds nice, Maxie. Mm -hmm. Sounds nice. Nice? Oh, it's gonna be better than nice. How, Maxie? Prohibition, that's how. That's the new angle, prohibition. I listen to a lot of operators up the river. <laughs> I listen and I learn. <laughs> Maxie's a real good listener. I got brains, but they're good as new, and you know why? Because I never used them. Well, now I'll use them. Hey, I made connections. I'm gonna be a big man. All I need's the shove, the back and the loot to get started. Well, uh, I still got a couple of thousand, Maxie, I put away, and, and then there are the two rings you give me. Rings, a couple of thousand. <laughs> you hear that, Favo? A woman. Hey, you don't think big, Stella. To be big, you gotta think big. Yeah, but Maxie, you said, well, to start with, you said that you needed... $250,000, that's what I need. $250,000? Yeah. And the connection's made. Wade sent to A.J., the D.A.J. himself, to listen to me. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna be a big man, Stella. The connection had been made. Maxie Gorman was going to be a big man. But, as in any legitimate enterprise, to start a new business, one must have financing. For financing, the legitimate businessman goes to a bank. But the bank for the mobs, for any illegitimate enterprise that promised high profits with a minimum of risk, was the man known as A.J. He would listen patiently to your business proposition, evaluate the risks, and make his decision. A bank has an obligation to its depositors. To secure a loan, one must post collateral, security. A.J. also had an obligation to his pocketbook. Security for a loan? 
usually the borrower's life. I, I checked it all out, A.J. Bootlegging, rum running. And now it's hit or miss. There's small operators, an algae plant here and there. Uh, a load of stuff run down now and then from Canada. <laughs> Wildcat, no plan. Yeah, but I'm gonna organize. Run it like, like the U.S. Steel. Fleets of trucks, warehouses, speedboats. Now, we buy the stuff in England. Take it off the ships onto our own speedboats. Get a safe dock, load onto our own trucks to our own warehouse. Yeah, and maybe, maybe we lose a load here and there. <laughs> Peanuts, we make it up in volume. You have a very great vision, Gorman. But it's there. The market's wide open. To develop an organization of that manpower, equipment, connections, it'll take a great deal of capital. That's why I talk to you. That we can't miss. I'll run every small operator out of business. Take over all of New York, eh? Yeah. yeah maybe all of the East Coast. But with your back in my ideas organization, who's going to stand up to me? There is one man who might stand up to you, Gorman. This man is already starting on exactly the same lines that you laid down. Just starting and already showing great efficiency. Who? Oh. Swede Jensen. Yeah, but you're not back in Jensen. No. Regretfully, no. But as an investor, I must consider the, the activities, the determination of Jensen a very great risk. Well, I'll take care of Sweet Jensen. Then you can come back and speak to me again. Well, I'll need some front money to handle it. How much? Well, say five G's. I'll need it to pay off the... I don't want to know what you need it for. I'll spend this money right, AJ. Gorman spent the money right. With it, he started to recruit the hardcore of the new Gorman mob. All freelance triggers for hire on a piecework basis. All except Anthony Rello. Rello was a Swede Jensen gun, and Rello was the key to getting to Swede Jensen. So I'll lay it down for you once more. From now on, you put in with me. <laughs> you don't do no more piecework. A job here, a job there. Now you go on a regular payroll, my payroll. And how do cold you get taken care of? Like how? Well, like this. You'll be working for an organization, a company. Now, say, uh, you say you run a gun on a truck. You say there's trouble, you get hurt. Well, you got nothing to worry about. We got a company doctor, all fixed up like a little hospital. He takes good care of you. And while you're out of action, you're still on the payroll. While we're laying up, we get paid, that it? You get paid, and I also take care of your doll. See, she stays out of trouble till you're back in action. Yeah. You wake for Maxie Gorman, and you're gonna be taken care of good. And if you start with me now, you're gonna get the best of it. We're gonna grow, and you boys gonna be top men in the organization. Sounds okay. Like with the future. But what about Sweet Jensen? That's our first job. The Swede. Tony Rello's putting in with me. Tony's gonna tell us how and when. Bring the next load from Canada down through Detroit. We had trouble in Detroit last time out, sweet. We won't have trouble there no more. Tony Rello's taking care of it. No. I told him to be here at 11. He'll give us a rundown on the action. Sweet? Yeah? I don't like the way Rello's been acting. What do you mean? I don't know. Just a funny feeling, I got. 
That's Tony now. May? May! So loud, Jensen, but I don't give him a chance to do it to me. Tony! It's ten, Chucks. Yeah, to start with. And to start with. Uh, the five speedboats, the two warehouses. Yes, we'll use my properties on 10th Avenue. I will sell them to the company. <laughs> sure. Now, Manpower. I start with a weekly payroll of 7,000. Figure a 50% increase in six months. $275,000, that's what it comes to. $275,000 is original investment. 275 plus the 5,000 I gave you, that makes $280,000. Make it an even 300, huh? Agreed. $300,000 on the following terms. We will form a company called uh, Gorge, G O R A G. Uh, you will own 100% of the company. I will lend your company the $300,000. The rate of interest will be 10%. The loan will be paid back to me in quarterly installments. But the interest continues to be paid on the full money until the loan is paid off. Ten percent? And by the time I'm down to paying off the last seventy-five thousand, I'm still paying on the full three hundred thousand? That's right. Yeah, but I... Okay. And, uh, I will share in the profits. How much? And fifty percent. For how long? Well, just as long as you stay in business. That's a stiff piece of shylocking, A.J. You can refuse or accept, Gorman. Your decision and no offense. Well, it looks like I don't have much choice. Then you accept? Yeah. Good. Now, one more thing. Security for the $300,000. Well, where am I going to get security? It's simple. I'll explain. The warehouses, the rolling stock, the trucks, all equipment. I will hold mortgage on all of it until the loan is paid off. And then I own them? Well, not exactly. You will own your 50%. <laughs> Might be better off if I stayed a slugger. But this is a business of numerous risks. Loss of equipment, inventory, and so forth. But the greatest risk, however, is loss of you. I'll stay alive, AJ. I promise you that. But my investment must be protected. Supposing that something should happen that you, you couldn't keep your promise. How? Uh, you will take out insurance policies with various companies. These policies will total $500,000. Uh, my investment corporation will be the beneficiary. Hey, Jay, you don't make sense. What company's gonna insure me? The three companies of which I am the principal agent. You think of everything, don't you, Jay? That is my business. Maxie Gorman accepted A.J.'s terms. The organization went into action. Here, Gorman controlled the East Coast. He locked up the whiskey supply and branched out. Numbers racket, gambling joints, narcotics. In two years, there wasn't an operator who could take any action in New York unless he was first okayed by Maxie Gorman. Maxie and Stella moved to a large, expensive apartment. Maxie? Yeah? I've been thinking. Yeah? About A.J. What about A.J.? Maxie? 
Yes, yeah, Stella. What do you think about AJ? What I think? What do you mean, what I think about AJ? What I ask you? What do you think about him? Well, I think he's a real smart cookie. That's what I think. That all? Well, what else? <sighs> Nothing. Stella. Yeah, Maxie? What's bugging you, Stella? Bugging me? What should be bugging me? That's what I'm asking, Stella. Why you think something should be bugging me, Maxie? All right. Let me hear it. Hear what? Oh, I know you, and I don't know you only from yesterday. I know all your signs from A to Z. You start nibbling around the edges till all of a sudden you're taking big bites from the middle. What's bugging you about A.J.? Well, if you can't treat your wife with some respect, then I got nothing to say to you. All right. I'm treating you with respect, like a duchess. What's on your mind about A.J.? How long you been in business with A.J., Maxie? Well, you know how long. I want you should say it. And I want you to say what you're trying to say. Tell me, Maxie, you got any idea how much money you already give to A.J.? I give? What do you mean I give? He's a partner, no? What made him your partner? What made him a... Oh, bugged. Flipped, I tell you, the dame's flipped. What made him a... Look, if you don't remember, for your information, A.J. only invested 300 G's. No, Maxie. A.J. didn't invest 300 G's. A.J. didn't invest 10 cents. A.J. made a loan with mortgages and insurance policies. A loan, Maxie, not an investment, a 10% loan. And he got that loan back long ago. But he's still a partner? He's still a partner. Who are you so angry at, Maxie? Me? For yourself. Good. The figures tally with the statement. Now, for the statement. For the quarter ending March 15th, revenue, sale of beer, $865,000. Whiskey, $2,325,000. Gambling, A. Numbers. One million two hundred thirty-four thousand dollars. B. Dyson Wheels. Two million six hundred fifty thousand dollars. Subsidiary Enterprises. Four hundred thirty thousand dollars. Total revenue for the quarter. Seven million five hundred four thousand dollars. Good. I notice, however, that our overhead shows an increase of twelve and a half percent over the last quarter. So. That must be watched. Well, I'm running a big organization. Overhead increase may be permitted only when there is a compensating increase in revenue. Think you can do better, A.J.? I leave operational directions to you, Gorman. I'm only concerned what happens in the books. Oh, and you ain't happy, huh? Happy? <laughs> I don't understand that word in business. There are no emotions in figures. For example, here, look. Beer sales. $865,000. But out of that sales revenue, you drew to your own personal account $230,000. Well, that's what it cost me. Out of my own personal pocket. Then it is a legitimate company business cost and should be itemized in the statements. I don't go around with a pencil in my hand. I got other things to worry about. What's the matter? You don't believe me? Oh, I, I do. I do believe you, Gorman. And because I believe you, sound business sense tells me that our, our beer activities are no longer profitable. The money can be used to greater advantage in other enterprises. I therefore suggest we eliminate all beer. Yeah, but I've got two operating breweries in Yonkers. We've got two operating breweries in Yonkers, and they're losing us money. Yeah, we get out of beer, what are we going to do with them? We'll sell them. I think the Dutchman will be willing to make a buy. 
And with the money If they don't show a profit for us, why would the Dutchman buy? Because he is dealing exclusively in beer. And with the breweries, we'll sell him the, the beer routes. The sale of that... No. We ain't selling no breweries and no beer routes. But they're losing us money, Gorman. We ain't selling. Gorman, please. I, I think I understand your sentimental attachment to the breweries, but, but I too have a sentimental attachment. My investment. Investment. Sound business practice dictates the answer. Since the breweries uh, are... Well, you know what you can do with your sound business practice. We ain't selling. <laughs> Shut up. Just like that. Like he was talking to an office boy or something. He sell the breweries, he tells Maxie. All right, Stella. Mm, tells. Orders. Like you tell an office boy. Run to the nearest corner and get me a corned beef. All right, it's enough. Just like to an office boy. Why does he want to sell the breweries? We're doing all right. Why? I'll tell you why. Because you and Maxie, you managed to make for yourself a few bucks from the beer. That's why. So? Ain't we got a right? Oh, oh, listen, to A.J. you got one right. The pleasure of bringing home to him every month a fortune of money. And for why? Stella, I told you once. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to Farvel. At least Farvel's a man who listens when somebody talks to him. Hmm. Don't hate to listen. And, and Farvel, <laughs> you know how long it took A.J. to get back that loan? No. Seven months. Yeah, seven months. Plus 10% interest. 10% interest. And even on the last payment of the loan of 75,000 bucks, it was 10% on the whole thing. Now, you know how much that makes an interest alone? 120,000 bucks in seven months. Yeah, 120,000 bucks. And since then, Farvel, since then, 50% of everything. Now, not only on the whiskey, which was the reason for the loan in the first place, but on the numbers, the gambling, narcotics, everything. <laughs> yeah. And who started it all? Whose money was it? Maxie's. Yeah, out of what he built up, A.J. clips a fat 50%. And if Maxie tries to make a few lousy bucks for himself from the beer, well, then he... Come on. Finished. We're finished, A.J. Yes. From now on, from this minute here, finished. Yes. You're out. Human, you're excited. You're not thinking clearly. Oh, I'm thinking clear for the first time since you got your Sherlock hooks into me. Human, may I suggest we discuss this calmly in the morning? Nothing to discuss. I already took a vote with myself. No more partnership. Human, you're taking records that belong to me. Records of my interest in your... Yeah. I put a match to these and you got no more interest. From tonight on, I start new records. You don't like it? <laughs> Sue me. Come on. Mrs. Gorman, may I be allowed to express my, my deep shock and sympathy? This has been a great loss to all of us, especially the insurance companies. Maxie Gorman, he said it at the beginning. You think of everything, don't you, A.J.? Yes, the man known as A.J. always thought of everything except once, and that was the fatal once for A.J. But that's another story for another time.